Yeah. Recently, the Daily Beast wrote this article, another hit piece on Marianne Williamson called Why Marianne Williamson Staffers Are Running for the Exits. Um, and if you just read this piece and had no idea about who Marianne Williamson was or anything about her campaign or what she stood for, you would just be like, what a disaster that, you know, the takeaway from this piece is basically this is a disorganized campaign that staffers are running for the exits, you know, all, all, more than 10 have already quit since she announced that she's running again. Uh, it basically goes on to try to paint her in the worst possible light based on the fact that recently there was a bit of some shakeup in the Marion Williamson campaign with people like Peter Dow and Jason Call stepping down. But Peter Dow himself, former campaign manager of Marion Williamson, who just exited the campaign, uh, released this statement kind of pushing back on a lot of what the Daily Beast article says. He says that he's been released from Williamson's NDA. Marion Williamson's campaign has agreed to let him speak freely about the recent media stories, mischaracterizing the campaign's inner workings. Outlets, including Politico and the Daily Beast, have published anonymous quotes that are categorically false. For example, this article suggests that at least 10 staffers left the campaign because of Marion's personality. In fact, when I joined as campaign manager, I restructured the team, equalized pay across the board, and began plans to unionize. He goes on to say, it was only fair to donors to run a tight budget, so I made that clear immediately. A number of staffers who were being compensated at much higher rates than the rest of the team decided or were asked to leave. The notion of a tumultuous staff exodus is false. In fact, I Let's hired just several... jump in there really oh, quickly and break that it. down, because I think that's pretty indicative of what kind of a campaign is being run here, guys. Uh, you know, Peter Dow, he, he, he literally is like, okay, bam, have to be running on a tight schedule. Okay, when we had, he looks at the checks or the that are going out. He's like, guys, we got to figure this shit out. Uh, and at least here, you know, your money's not going to waste when, uh, you know, you uh, donate to the Marianne Williamson campaign. A lot of people are like, this is just for them to live in luxury, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, well, that's not really true. Uh, and it is hard to get difficult talent when you don't have a fucking, you know, bounty of capital. Um, but that doesn't mean that you will win an election. Just look at Mike Bloomberg, who we often forget just he had the money to pay everybody and then still just fucking screwed all of his staffers out of the oh. bonuses that he promised them all. Yep, that was crazy. Um, anyway, yeah, Peter Dow basically just categorically debunking what the Daily Beast made the situation out to be in their hit piece. He goes on to say, in fact, I hired several new staffers and assembled a leadership team to develop and implement a strong field slash grassroots strategy. I was proud to work with an amazing group of progressives ready to take on Biden and compete for the nomination. So why did I join and then leave? I quit the Democratic Party in 2020, and I've consistently advocated for more non-duopoly choices. However, I will occasionally help progressive or leftist candidates with excellent platforms who run as Democrats. For example, Jason Call in 2022. Jason Call is now running as a Green Party candidate, by the way. Um, Peter Dow goes on to say that he joined Marianne because her platform is exceptional and was written with the help of his friends. And he admired her work on Project Angel Food, which she founded that has delivered 16 million meals to housebound people. And importantly, it was a way to fight Biden's coronation. He then goes on to say, I was taking care of my alien mother at the time who was in hospice and helping his wife care for her mother who recently received a terminal diagnosis. I thought I could manage the intensity of the campaign while caregiving but I was wrong, so I chose my family first. Back to the press coverage, a recent Politico article quoted an anonymous source saying, I left because the campaign took a more progressive direction. Utter bullshit. From day one, I believed Marianne Williamson and Robert Kennedy Jr. should consider running as independents. And yeah, I, I remember when I saw that quote in the Politico piece that Peter Dow left the campaign because Marianne Williamson was like too progressive or whatever. Uh, I immediately knew that was ridiculous because Peter Dow is arguably even further to the left when it comes to his strategy and that he doesn't even really think that running within the Democratic Party is as um, important or as useful as running independent. Yeah, they tried so to I knew that was write great. off Jason Call the same way, which is absolutely right. ridiculous. One of the most fucking ardent progressives in all of like, you know, the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, just a totally ridiculous smear from the media. Establishment Democrats don't want a primary and will ruthlessly crush one while pretending they're saving democracy. Joe Biden is a terrible candidate and the majority of Dem voters want someone else to take on the GOP. 
yet the DNC is de determined to foist Biden on voters, even at the risk of a Republican victory. You may love or hate Marianne or RFK Jr., but the idea that nobody should challenge Biden is beyond reckless. It's a pure gift to Trump and DeSantis. All campaigns have internal strife. I've been doing this for 22 years plus, and there's always been drama, drama, back channeling, turf fights, leaks, etc. You can always find an anonymous quote to paint a picture of turmoil, but let's cut through the facade that the national press is neutral. The political media has continued reporting on everything other than Marion's politics and Biden's abject failures is part of a larger effort to squelch this primary and nominate Biden. By the way, great use of the term squelch. Big fan of that term. Um, <laughs> criticize Marianne and RFK all you want, but Biden is the one who caged migrants. Biden is the one who approved more drilling than Trump, pushed a bigger military budget than Trump, presided over more COVID deaths than Trump. Biden is the one who took money from starving Afghanistan children. Biden is the one who has failed to implement his basic promises. And this is, you know, such a great point from Peter Dow and one that I totally agree with, right? Like, yeah, are there fair criticisms of Marion Williamson? Yes, I have some criticisms of Marion Williamson. Obviously, there's no one you're going to agree with 100% of the time um, or that you have no disagreements with. But when you contrast that with the alternative, which is not Bernie Sanders, not fucking Shama Sawant, not your favorite, most progressive politician in the entire world. No, the alternative is Joe Biden. And Peter Dow is absolutely correct to point out that, yeah, he's the one that actually proved more oil drilling than Trump, pushed for a bigger military budget than Trump, presided over more COVID deaths than Trump. Um, so to act like whatever you disagree with Marion Williamson on is more important and overrides that, in my opinion, is frankly ridiculous. And I'm glad to see that Peter Dow still agrees with that, despite the fact that he personally decided to leave the campaign. That's why you need to make America great again, Gavin. <laughs> Donald Trump is better than Joe Biden. Wow. Based. Based, Peter Dow. No, 100%. I, I agree. And it's hard. It's hard. That's what I was kind of trying to allude to earlier is this time around, it's going to be fucking hard for them to just shame people and alarm their way into a Donald Trump or uh, excuse me, a Biden presidency because of the fact that it's really easy to just fire off something like this and then be like, oh, wait, what if, if Donald Trump did so tell me again how you're voting for Joe Biden because of how racist Donald Trump is towards Mexican? Don't you think Joe Biden is racist as fuck towards me? I'm sorry he didn't come out and loudly spell it out for you. Um, I didn't realize like, yeah, he's he, he can he can uh, he continued all of the border policies, uh, you know, he child separation all of that shit happens under joe biden you just don't hear about it because there's not a brand around that um so yeah anyway i'm glad to see that peter dow came out here ironed this all out a lot of people who oddly enough consider themselves leftists were like super stoked to see the only leftist challenger go down uh you know uh, they would rather have pro-capitalism pro pre -mar uh pro free market former hillary clinton uh supporter uh, twice, two, two time around, uh, you know, anti-vaxxer RFK on from the, cl uh, from the, uh, you know, speaking of from people who hate political dynasties, they were sure quick to jump on the America's greatest political dynasty <laughs> since the Washingtons. Um, but anyways, I digress. Uh, they're overall live with Jimmy Dore right now, which shows you exactly <laughs> what kind of politics they're up to. Long story short, Marianne Williamson out here, um, you know, and a lot of people were like, oh, this is the end for her. No, Peter Dow clarifies they're cleaning house. They're getting their shit together. You know, uh, he mentioned at the beginning of his uh, statements that this was a temporary position uh, that, you know, he wasn't going to be campaign manager for forever. And with the situation of his, uh, you know, uh, family member that he needs to take care of his ailing mother, um, you know, makes sense that somebody else had to step in. Uh, you know, we're big fans of Rosie Calderon. She's always been super uh, nice to us. She's got great uh, progressive track record and we're excited to see where it goes. But yeah, uh, also glad to see that uh, Peter Dow was able to come and, uh, you know, put all of this to rest and, you know, be like, yeah, there were hit pieces. We always talk about how they try and slam real progressives. Well, this is an example of it. Don't fall for the fucking bait. Oh, 100 percent correct. And also, I love that Peter Dow ends a thread by pointing out that despite the fact that he wants RFK and Marion to run as independents, um, he has to acknowledge that Marion Williamson has the best platform in the 2024 race, which I think is undeniably true. I think you're a fucking idiot if you disagree with that. 
Um, at least if you're a perspective or sorry, if you're a progressive, right? If you're coming at this from like a progressive or lefty perspective, if you have different priorities than me, then, you know, feel free to vote for whoever most aligns with your priorities. But at least from my perspective, it is obvious that Marianne Williamson has the best platform in the 2024 race, which is why I'm supporting her. Apparently that's controversial now to support the candidate who has the best platform in the race they're running in. Um, <laughs> but I think that's pretty sound reasoning for voting for someone. Yep, absolutely. So shout out to, oh, well, I'll shout out to Peter Dow for fucking, you know, coming out here and clarifying all of this. And, you know, honestly, just like making, being really fair to the Marianne Williamson campaign. Obviously, we don't know all the backgrounds into like, it's always difficult when somebody makes a decision to leave uh, an organization that they've put a lot of heart and effort into. So there's always, you know, just to see him come out and be like, hey guys, like, no, let's keep up, let's keep our eye on the price, on the policy. I think that's, uh, yep. you know, an admirable move. 